Haugen, Brianna Albers, Katia Beebe, Taylor Blockstead, Tara Matuska. I cannot imagine any condition which would cause a ship to founder. I cannot conceive of any vital disaster happening to this vessel. Modern shipbuilding has gone beyond that, said by Edward Smith, the captain of Titanic, in a 1912 interview. In a survey we conducted, everyone in this room has heard of the Titanic and how it was called the unsinkable ship. The Titanic is considered one of the most famous shipwrecks in history. The Titanic is intriguing, first, because of it being called the unsinkable ship, second, the way it sunk, third, all the famous people aboard, fourth, the findings on the Titanic, and finally, the Titanic II. Let's begin with all of the reasons the Titanic is considered the unsinkable ship. Built at Harland & Wolff's largest shipyard in Belfast, Ireland, the Titanic was designed to top the competing ship, the Cunyard, not by speed, but with size and luxury. Wanting to create the largest moving man-made object in the world, Tom Thomas Andrews and Bruce Ismay did just that. Around 15,000 workers began construction of the Titanic on March 31st, 1909, and was launched to the public on May 31st, 1911, without the, without the engines or interior yet installed. Here's a picture of the Titanic being built at the shipyard. It was finalized on March 31st, 1912. It, it had the ability to hold 3,547 passengers at one time. The ship stood at 104 feet tall and 833 feet long also harboring the largest hand-forged anchor in the world at 18 feet and 15 tons. Bill Sauter, the technical advisor on Robert Bell's expedition to find the Titanic, wrote in the article, The Build of the Titanic, on November 21, 2012, that the interior of the Titanic is often likened to a floating palace and contains some of the finest examples of craftsmanship and interior design ever seen in an ocean liner to this day. Such amenities for first, for first class passengers included a dining room that was 114 feet long and could hold 532 passengers at one time. This was the largest dining room ever seen on a ship. In the first class bedrooms, it also included different periodic styles like kings and queens from past history. Perhaps one of the most famous pieces was the first class grand staircase, which was 60 feet long and was crafted with solid oak. Behind the staircase was a handcrafted clock, which is still visible today, even after the wreck. Second class rooms included a smoke room, a library, and a dining room. Second class passengers could also choose be between having two or four beds in a bedroom. Most of the passengers on the Titanic traveled in the third class and were people traveling to a new country for a new life. Although the third class passengers did not have as many luxurious amenities as the first and second class passengers, the company wanted them to feel comfortable while beginning their new life. The third class rooms included smoke room, a general room, which was the main meeting room, and a dining room. Another extravagance get available to these passengers was the amount of food. According to Patrick J. Kiger, author and researcher, said in the article, Life on Board Cuisine, on April 12, 2017, that there were approximately 75,000 pounds of fresh meat, 40,000 eggs, and 40 tons of potatoes, and much, much more. There were also 56,000 items of dishware, most specifically made for the Titanic itself. Rich or poor, these passengers were treated with a once in a lifetime, top of the line experience. Now that we know why the Titanic was called unsinkable, let's look at a memorable day in history. The Titanic made its maiden voyage across the Atlantic Ocean in 1912. The ship left Southampton, England on April 10, 1912. This is according to Paul J. Quinn, a member of the Titanic Historical Society, in the book Titanic at 2 a.m., published in January 1997. As the Titanic was leaving port, it almost collided with another ship. 
Luckily, the Titanic was able to pass unharmed with just a few feet to spare. After safely leaving the port, but before fully starting its journey to New York, the Titanic made stops in Cherbourg, France, and Queenstown, Ireland to pick up final passengers. Here is a picture of the map with the map that the with the route that the Titanic took. The Titanic was scheduled to make a seven-day journey across the Atlantic Ocean and set to arrive in New York on April 17th. Everything seemed to be running smoothly until April 14th. Throughout the day, the Titanic had received multiple iceberg warnings from other ships in the area. The first iceberg warning came in at 9 a.m. from a ship called the Carlinia. Another iceberg warning was received by the Titanic at 1.42 p.m. by a ship called the Baltic. Both of these messages were ignored and the captain, Edward Smith, ordered that the Titanic remain at its current speed. His goal was to arrive in New York ahead of schedule and prove that the Titanic really was the finest and fastest ship ever built. His plan would later prove to be ineffective because at 11.40 p.m. on April 14th, the Titanic struck an iceberg. The impact from the iceberg created holes in the outside wall of the ship. The hull was divided into 16 watertight compartments. Five of these compartments were ruptured due to the iceberg. This was reported by Christopher Klein, a United States history author, who wrote the article, Titanic Sinks, in September 2010. The so-called watertight compartments were not sealed at the top. Because of this, water was able to overflow into unruptured compartments. As more compartments filled with water, the bow, or the front of the boat, was pulled down. This caused the Titanic to raise up to almost vertical. At April, on April 15th at 2.20 a.m., the ship was fully submerged in water, and two minutes after that, it reached the bottom of the ocean. An hour and 20 minutes later, a ship named the Carinthia arrived and rescued survivors. Although the Titanic sank, there were many survivors, and a few of them were famous. There were many famous people on board the Titanic. Edward Smith was the first and only captain of this vessel. Edward John Smith was born on January 27, 1850 in Hanley, Staffordshire, England. He was raised in a working environment and at the, left school at the age of 13 and joined the Merchant Navy at the age of 17. After a few years, he got a job at the White Star Line, which is a prestigious British shipping company. He quickly rose to the rank of captain and was considered one of the world's most experienced sea captains. According to Duncan Crosby, a nonfiction history writer in the book Titanic, The Ship of Dreams, written in 2007, Smith commanded the Majestic, the Baltic, the Adriatic, and the Olympic, which was Titanic's first sister ship. When the Titanic was made, Smith was the White Star Line's first choice to command the largest vessel of its time. Many sources say that Smith was planning on retiring after Titanic's maiden voyage. Unfortunately, he went down with his ship on April 15, 1912, at the age of 62, and his body was never recovered. Margaret Brown is known as the unsinkable Molly Brown for many reasons. Margaret Tobin was born on July 18, 1867, in Hannibal, Missouri. At the age of 18, she moved to Leadville, Colorado, which is where she met and married her husband, James Joseph Brown. The Brown family struck it rich in 1893 when the company that JJ was working for found a substantial amount of gold ore in their mine. Brown was traveling throughout Egypt when she got word that her first grandchild was ill, which is when she decided to head to New York immediately on the first ship headed that way, the Titanic. When the ship hit the iceberg, Brown helped load others into lifeboats before being loaded into one herself. According to Sinan Maloney, a journalist who has researched the sinking of the Titanic for more than 30 years in the book Titanic, a primary source of history written in 2006, she is most famous for encouraging the crew of lifeboat number six to return to the wreck site and look for survivors. She was given the name the unsinkable Molly Brown by authors because she helped in the ship's evacuation. In this picture, taken on May 29, 1912, she is giving Captain Arthur Henry Rostron, and the captain of the Carpathia, an award for his service in the rescue of Titanic's surviving passengers. In the last years of her life, she worked as an actress. 
Margaret Brown died in her sleep at 10.55 p.m. on October 26, 1932 in the Barbizon Hotel in New York City. After her death, there was a musical made about her life that was later turned into a movie. Violet Jessup is the only person known to have survived the disasters of all three Olympic class vessels made by the White Star Line. Jessup was born on October 1, 1887 in Bahia Blanca, Argentina. At the age of 16, her father died and her family moved to England. At the age of 21, she was hired for her first stewardess position. In 1911, she was a stewardess on the RMS Olympic when it collided with a British warship. There were no fatalities and the ship was able to make it back to port. In 1912, she's working as a stewardess on the RMS Titanic when it struck an iceberg. She was loaded into a lifeboat that was rescued by the Carpathia in the wee hours of the morning. During World War I, Jessup worked as a stewardess for the British Red Cross. In this picture, she is wearing her uniform for this job. In 1916, she was working on the HMHS Britannic, which had been converted into a hospital ship when it suddenly began to sink because of an unexplained explosion. When the Britannic was sinking, Jessup and other passengers were nearly killed by the boat's propellers that were sucking lifeboats underneath the stern. Jessup had to jump from her lifeboat and received a traumatic head injury, but survived. Jessup died in 18, 1971 at the age of 83 from congestive heart failure. Captain Smith, along with many others, found his final resting place at the bottom of the ocean. Many of the objects that sank with the Titanic were later found when the Titanic was discovered. The Titanic was found on September 1, 1985 by a deep sea vehicle named Argo. 70 years after the Titanic hit an iceberg and sank into the Atlantic Ocean, Argo was developed by Dr. Robert P. Ballard. The U.S. Navy had asked Dr. Ballard on a secret mission into the Atlantic Ocean. A video camera and sonar, sonar were put on Argo to take images underwater. They would then be sent up to the NAR, which was a research vessel owned by the U.S. Navy, where Dr. Ballard and his research team were. These were the first images the world had seen since the Titanic sank. The images were of the giant boilers from the ship. The Titanic was located approximately two miles below the surface of the Atlantic Ocean, off the coast of Newfoundland. According to Amy Tikkanen, a corrections manager at Encyclopedia Britannic, in the article titled Titanic, written in 2011, states that the Titanic was located approximately 13 nautical miles from the position given in distress signals. Video later showed the ship flying upright in two pieces and the bow had penetrated 18 meters into the seabed. There are many things from the ship that settled across miles of seabed, including dishes, machinery, and people. In the year 1987, the submersible named Nuttile picked up the first 1,800 artifacts. They were then examined by researchers and put on display. Later on, a large section of the null was brought up. In the late 20th century and early 21st century, artifacts formed basis of a highly successful exhibit that traveled the world, and a profitable business was made transporting tourists to and from the wreck site and museums. As of 2012, you cannot go and see the Titanic underwater, and one of the reasons being it is a great site. There are many technological advances in finding the Titanic. Because of the technological advances, the Titanic can be explored like any other underwater site. Extreme depth is not an obstacle. From finding the Titanic, it propelled expanding underwater archaeology. According to James P. Delgado, a maritime archaeologist, in the article Archaeology of Titanic, written in June 2012, the first sonar systems were created to locate and avoid icebergs. Since then, there has not been a major ship accident involving an iceberg like the Titanic. Researchers are yet to conduct a detailed oceanographic studies of the wreck's effects on the surrounding deep sea environment. The Titanic will not remain on the sea floor for much longer. Eventually, the Titanic will deteriorate. There are microorganisms deep in the sea that eat away at the iron of the ship. These microorganisms are called rusticles. There are also marine organisms and acidic clay that consume organic <coughs> material, for example, wood and people. Since bacteria eats away at the steel and iron of the ship, what is left is red, yellow, and orange byproducts. Here is a picture of these byproducts on a section of the ship. In the year 2099, the Titanic will be nothing but a pile of iron ore at the bottom of the sea. Nearly 30 years after finding the Titanic, they finally have enough information to replicate this magnificent ship.
The Titanic II is a modern-day replica of the Titanic. On April 30th, 2012, an Australian billionaire named Clive Palmer announced a $500 million project for the construction of the Titanic II, which will be a replica of the original Olympic-class RMS Titanic. There are a lot of similarities between the Titanic and the Titanic II. The ship will have practically the same dimension as the original Titanic, which, compared to modern-day cruise ships, is considered small. Here's a picture of the Titanic next to a cruise ship. As you can see, the Titanic is much smaller than the cruise ships of today. It will hold the same number of passengers with a capacity of 2,435. There will be 900 crew members, while the first Titanic had 892, which is practically the same. As of right now, it is planned that all of the original restaurants and dining rooms will be represented in the Titanic too. As of right, yeah. The, there will also be, there are also, um, it will also have the same three passenger classes, them being first class, second class, and third class. Along with all of these similarities, there are a few differences between the Titanic and the Titanic II. The Titanic II will have more lifeboat capacity than the original. The Titanic II will hold 2,700 lifeboats that are, versus the original 1,187, which is more than double the amount. A new extra safety deck between original decks D and C will be projected to hold an extra 18 lifeboats and safety chutes. On the Titanic II, there will be enough lifeboats to hold all of the passengers in case of an emergency. While the external look of the Titanic II will be an exact replica of the original, it will have all 21st century equipment and safety standards. The new ship is estimated to cost around $435 million and will have all of the new equipment. James McDonald, the global marketing director at the Titanic II company, in the article Blue Star Line on February 10, 2016, stated that the Titanic II will of course have all of the modern day evacuation procedures, satellite controls, digital navigation, radar systems, and all the things you would expect on a 21st century ship. Coal-fired boilers and steam engines will be replaced with diesel drivers and many other engine differences. The maiden voyage of the Titanic II will also differ from the original Southampton to New York route. Titanic II will travel from Jiangsu, China to Dubai, United Arab Emirates. Clive Palmer, the Australian billionaire behind the scheme of the Titanic II, in the article RMS Titanic II on June 18, 2015, claimed that the vessel would set sail sometime in 2016 and would travel the New York-Southampton route. But later, the Chinese Navy had invited them to move across the Atlantic instead. Initially, the Titanic II was supposed to set sail in 2016, but was delayed. It is now going to be launched in 2018. There are a lot of people wanting to get involved with the vessel. Blue Star Line has reportedly been flooded with requests for tickets some offering as much as $900 million for a trip on the first, for on the trip, for a trip on the first trip. The Titanic II will be fireproof and will be able to withstand icebergs and any other weather extreme. The ship has a lot of similarities and differences between the original and is supposed to be very luxurious. we told you that the Titanic is intriguing because of it being called the unsinkable ship, the way it sank, and all the famous people aboard, the findings of the Titanic, and finally, the Titanic II. The Titanic is considered one of the most famous shipwrecks in history. If people like Captain Edward Smith were not so overly confident in this ship, perhaps so many lives would not have been lost.